Let's pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, when we were lost in our sin and when we were on the way to eternal hell, you saved us by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We glorify you. And we thank you for guiding us all the time and giving us this chance to listen to your word so that we can grow. Give us understanding and wisdom so that we can find out your will in our life and we can work harder for your glory. From the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Uh, let us turn to uh, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. A little bit long, but we'll read uh, Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to verse 13 together. 13 verses. <clears throat> So let's read it together. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the, the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Um, as we read uh, Matthew chapter 25, there are three stories. First is the story of ten virgins, five wise, five uh, foolish. And this is about who will enter the heaven when Jesus comes again in his second coming. And the second story is about the, um, the talents, uh, you know, the servants of a master received five talents, uh, two talents, and one talent. And then, the, you know, they settled account with the master when he came back. And this is about us, we Christians, settling account with our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes again. And the third story is about uh, the judgment of God and... Um, the sheep, and we know that the sheep are the born again Christians, and uh, they will enter eternal heaven. And the uh, goat will cast into the lake of fire, which was actually originally prepared for the devil and his angel. So, all these three stories in Matthew chapter 25 is about uh, the final judgment, the second coming of Jesus, and final judgment. And uh, we have to listen to these stories again and again because uh, we are very near to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, among them, um, I'd like to talk about the first uh, parable of ten virgins this time so that uh, we know what this parable means. Especially, there are some people think, uh, who are thinking that even these five foolish virgins are saved but they'll be left behind. Like um, there are people who think that even the born again Christians uh, can lose their salvation, which is not true. So I will explain why uh, that's not the case. So first one and two. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Of course. This bridegroom is Jesus Christ, right? 
He is the best bridegroom. And do you know that we all uh, are, will be the bride? I mean, there will be the wedding for uh, the, when Jesus comes again. There will be a wedding in heaven uh, of Jesus and his bride, us, we Christians. That is the, um, the consummation of God's plan. Actually, That is why God created everything and why he started human history to prepare the bride for uh, Jesus Christ. Let's bookmark here. We'll come back here frequently. And let's turn to Revelation chapter 19, verses uh, 7 to 9. Let me read uh, Revelation, the last book in the Bible, chapter 19, verses 7 to 9. Let me read. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready, and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. And the church, uh, Jesus loves church so much, that's why he gave his life for the church, to prepare the church. Uh, it required his life. Because of sin, we are lost, but you know, Jesus gave his own life to save us, and that's why um, we have received eternal life. I think this is the greatest love story. You know, sometimes we hear that uh, like a prince uh, to marry a, a common woman, he uh, leaves all his uh, position and um, you know the privilege and he becomes a common man too like uh, oh yeah in japan it's going on right uh, one princess she married a just common man and she left uh, all her privilege and position and palace and then she became a, a ordinary person but this story about jesus uh, coming all the way from heaven to this earth to die for us because he loves us so much god loves the world god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son right so this love story is uh, it started from the the beginning actually right why god created adam and eve um, we know that um, you know we are his uh, lovers basically loving partner right so this marriage will be the, um, the consummation of God's plan. And let's go back to Matthew chapter 25. Uh, there were 10 virgins uh, waiting for the bridegroom. Um, and the fact was uh, five of them were wise and five were foolish. So let's think about this one. The wise virgins and foolish virgins. Later we find out that uh, you know, it depends upon whether they have prepared the oil or not. This wisdom is not this worldly wisdom, by the way. There are many people who are very smart, uh, who are uh, very knowledgeable, and um, you know, who write books, and then the professors and all the scholars. But this spiritual knowledge is not for everyone, right? Regarding the Creator God, you know, He created the heavens and the earth. And regarding the, the Word of God, you know, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Only then we can understand. Actually, when we say we are born again, that means that we have found the Creator of the whole universe and Creator of us. And then, you know, He has a plan for us sinners. And he gave his only son, Jesus, to die for us so that we can become his children. And now we know our home is in heaven. This wisdom, you know, people say it's ridiculous and then the people reject this love of God. But we know that, you know, from the Bible we found this true love, the most wonderful love, this most beautiful uh, love story, actually. Let's 
And I told you to bookmark here. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Let me read. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Let me tell you one thing. Think about the ant, small ant. When ant is you know, crawling over the computer, when ant look at the computer, ant doesn't understand at all what computer is, what it's for, you know, you know what it's doing basically, because uh, he has no idea. Just like that, for us, this is our limitation. Our eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God has prepared so many things for us, so many wonderful and amazing things for us, which we have no idea of because, you know, the limitation of our knowledge or our intelligence. You know, we think we are very creative, but uh, comparing, compared to what God has prepared for us, uh, we have no idea. So verse 11, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. What is the job of the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit helps us to understand the grace of God, the love of God, and whatever God has prepared for us, now we understand through the help of the Holy Spirit. God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, we have no idea about God and His ability and His love and His power, His wisdom. We have no idea, right? Verse 11, But what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Of course, I have no idea what uh, other people think in their heart, right? Only the spirit of that person knows what's going on in, in his or her heart. So just like that, only the spirit of God can tell us what is going on in God's heart, right? So verse 12, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, not the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world cannot understand spiritual things. But the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely, freely given to us by God. The Holy Spirit is our guide. He is teaching us all the great things about God and what is awaiting us in heaven. Are you too busy to think about worldly things? I want you to take time from time to time to think about what God has prepared for us in heaven. There'll be no tears, no pain, no sickness, no death, no work, of course, no sorrow. It's a, it'll be a perfect world. Do you think this is the perfect world? With all these pains and sufferings, especially the war is going on these days. I see the pictures of the so many people who are dead. You know, this war of uh, Russia between Russia and Ukraine, and you know, there's nothing much we can do about it, basically, uh, except praying. Not only that, this world is getting old, it's uh, growing old, and then uh, it's being worn out, right? So the so everything uh, tells us that the end is near, actually, right? And that's why God will destroy this earth and heaven, and He will prepare the new heaven and new earth for us, for His children. But all of this wisdom or knowledge uh, can be obtained only through the Holy Spirit, right? Let's go back to Matthew chapter twenty-five. So these are. Uh, uh, wise virgins are those who are saved and those who know God and those who know the truth and those, these f uh, another uh, five foolish virgins they are not truly born again but you know remember these ten virgins were waiting for a bridegroom which means that you know these uh, represents those people who are waiting for Jesus to come again 
So now we know all oh, these five foolish virgins, they are not unbelievers. They are so-called Christians. They are the ones who say, oh, Jesus is coming. When he comes, so we'll join him. And that's why they are waiting for him. So why they were foolish? Verse 3, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil, oil with them. Interesting, you know. They need oil for the lamp. By the way, do you know what this lamp represents? This lamp refers to? It's our spirit, right? Our spirit uh, is uh, compared with the lamp. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs is after Psalm. Psalm is in the center of the Bible. Okay. So Proverbs 20, verse 27. Let's read it together. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. So our spirit is like a lamp. And we need oil for the lamp. Right? And this oil is the Holy Spirit. We are born dead spiritually because of the sin of Adam. You know, we had no spiritual knowledge. We had no idea about God. No. This lamp uh, was uh, uh, without oil in the beginning. Right? This oil, let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, verse 3. This oil, of course, it means the Holy Spirit. We need this oil to burn it. You know, we Christians are the light of the world, light. So to become the light of the world, we need oil to burn in our lamp, right? And actually, when you get saved, it's the Holy Spirit who guarantees your salvation. He's God sealed us as his children with the Holy Spirit, right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 22. Let's read it together. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed, uh, sealed us and given us the Spirit in our heart as a guarantee. He anointed us. Anointing means uh, with oil, right? Pouring oil. Like uh, in, the, in the Old Testament time, the king was anointed by God with oil. So, God has anointed us. You know, we are the God's child, and we are the king, and we are the prophet of God also. We are the priest of God. So now we have all kinds of these uh, positions in Jesus Christ. And verse 22, who also has sealed us. Seal means, seal means ownership. Like, a, you know, in a farm, when there are many animals, uh, there's another farm so to identify uh, the, like a sheep or some animals belonging to one farm, they, they put the seal, right? So, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our heart as a guarantee? I'm quite happy to know that the Holy Spirit never and ever leaves us. He will be with us eternally. You know, Once He enters our heart, in the time of salvation, of course, Right, And then He dwells in our heart and He prays for us. He makes intercession for us and He is helping us and guiding us and encouraging us and strengthening us until you know, we go to uh, the heaven and we'll be uh, with God forever there. So, the Holy Spirit never and ever leaves and He is the guarantee of our salvation. Do you know how we can be so sure about uh, we are go our going to heaven? Even though we never seen heaven or, you know, sometimes we know that we are not worthy to be there, right? Sometimes we make a mistake, but still we know that, oh yes, Jesus' blood covered all of, all of my sins until I die and 
in that promise, how could we uh, believe and trust that promise in the Bible? It's the Holy Spirit you know, who helps us to believe, actually. He opened our heart, right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. Let's turn to 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 20. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. Let us read 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 20 together. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know all things. You know, all these spiritual things we come to know. How? Because we have anointing. The Holy Spirit teaches us. Right? After salvation, many brothers, sisters, they say that when they look at the flowers or the birds or the, all the trees, they feel um, the wisdom and power of God. Right? Before, they didn't notice it. They just thought, oh, they are beautiful, but other than that, they have no idea. But after salvation, even, you know, this is springtime, whenever I see all these flowers and the trees looked like a dead in, during the winter time, but now all the flowers are blooming and then the leaves coming out and then I see, wow, God's great work. For me, always uh, it's amazing to see the colors of the flower, like white colors, pink color of flower. And then I'm wondering where uh, in the soil, where the color was hiding and it comes out, you know? Suppose I give you some earth, some dust or soil, and if I tell you that get the white color from the soil, can you do that? But that's what the plant does, right? It, it takes uh, the nutrition from the earth and then rain and sunshine, and then it, it, it produces these beautiful colors, yellow and red and white. It's amazing actually to see and then now we know that of course with the help of the Holy Spirit because we have the anointing um, it's the amazing work of God his intelligence and his power is shown in his work all this nature Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 of course regarding this Holy Spirit we have to understand because uh, it is the Holy Spirit who is guiding us all the time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Again, the scripture says we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Let's read it together. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with us with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the, the moment you uh, come to believe the gospel message, that's when you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. So the oil, the wise virgins had the oil, right? And that means they had the Holy Spirit, which means they were born again Christians. But these um, foolish ones, they had no oil. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, verse 3 and 4. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So they are the one without the Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So we are the one, you know, the Holy Spirit has sealed us and he has become a guarantee for us which is amazing and verse 5 but while the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept listen I think we have to uh, get really important lesson from this verse all of them five uh, born again Christians and by foolish who are not truly born again, but they claim they are, they profess they are to be uh, Christians, but they are not. But all of them slumbered and slept. Why? Because the bridegroom was delayed. Some Christians say that, oh, I heard about Jesus' second coming 
like 20 years ago, but he's still not coming, right? They say that, you know, oh, is it really, is it really coming? Is it really coming? Of course, uh, it looks like uh, uh, Jesus is delayed. Do you know why? I know why. Because he loves everyone in this world, right? He wants to give chance to every sinner, right? Let's turn to Second Peter chapter three, verse eight and nine. Second Peter. Second Peter. Chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Second yeah, Peter, chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Okay, let's read it together. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just imagine Jesus comes right away, right now. Are all of your friends saved? Are all of your family members are saved? What about the, if you are a student, what about your friend studying right next to you? Is he or she saved? And when Jesus comes again, they, they, they will have no chance to, for salvation and they will end up in eternal hell. Do you know that? Right? The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. He doesn't want any to perish. God wants, God desires each and everyone to be saved. That's the heart of God. So that's why. He wants to save at least one more and one more. You know, of course, there's a limit in God's waiting or God's uh, patience, but uh, His long suffering now that all should come to repentance. He's waiting as if one day is a thousand years. Even every day and each day is such a long time for Him because he wa He's waiting for the lost souls to repent and to believe the gospel message and to become born again, right? That's why he's not, he hasn't come yet. He's waiting and waiting. Do you know, um, as Christians and as we have the Holy Spirit in our heart, we should understand the heart of God and the will of God. Then, you know, we will go out and preach the gospel as much as possible. By the way, the good news is this year uh, we'll be having the summer retreat as before, uh, as the government uh, announced that there will be no social distancing anymore. And then um, even uh, from May in Suwon Church, we are preparing the lunch at the long time so that we can have, uh, we can eat together and then again uh, work together on Sundays, uh, but not only that, uh, we'll be having a uh, summer retreat seven times this year. The schedule already has been announced. And uh, for English speaking group, there'll be uh, at the first, third and fifth retreat, there'll be the uh, s uh, program for the uh, English speaking audience, actually the seminar for the, uh, in English. So let's pray for the summer retreat because we know that Corona, this pandemic hasn't been, it's not over yet, actually. There's a still some risk of uh, spreading this uh, you know, disease when we gather together. So we have to pray and we have to prepare. But this, I visited the Gongju Retreat Center last uh, week uh, and it's amazing. You know, we have built more buildings to accommodate more people. So um, it's there already. You know, we spent so much money to, to build those buildings. And even we bought, there was another retreat center right next to ours, uh, uh, belonging to another church. And finally, they sold that property to us. So uh, we are so glad that um, our retreat center is expanding uh, and then uh, it will be more comfortable for us. 
because it's very crowded, right? I miss that crowdedness and then the working together during the hot summer day. And then, do you know, when we go to, when we go to heaven, the only thing uh, which will be left or which you will remember is that whatever we have done for God, actually. You know, whatever we sacrificed, uh, whatever uh, we have done for God will remain forever and ever. Like uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the, all, uh, whatever you have done will go through the fire, but the precious time you gave to God or the, all this material you, you, you offered to God will remain and then God will reward you. But whatever you s used for yourself will be burned anyway. So, it looks like um, you know Jesus is being delayed, and uh, especially those who are not born again, they don't even think about Jesus' second coming, and they just enjoying this time. And then the Christians can be affected by these unbelievers. And then you know these days the new technology is coming up every day, and then all kinds of entertainment is tempting us. So even Christians they are distracted. We are not focusing on Jesus' second coming, and then this is a big problem. Okay, they all slumbered and slept. Are you a sleeping Christian? You shouldn't be. Okay, let's turn to First Thessalonians chapter five or six. First Thessalonians chapter five or six. First Thessalonians chapter five or six, uh, verses six to eight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, three verses, let's read it together. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the brace, breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Therefore, let us not sleep. It's, a very, it's very dark, you know. This world is very sinful and very dark because um, right before the dawn, right before the rising of the sun, is the darkest time. And then we know that it has become so sinful and people, you know, they do not care about God or they do not want to listen to the word of God. They just want to enjoy. For those who sleep, sleep at night. You know, those who sin, they sin during the night time, not the daytime, right? So remember, our modern age, you know, it's very dark spiritually, okay? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, um, verse 6, verse 6. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 6, And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. It's interesting. We haven't, we, we, we've been hearing about Jesus' second coming for such a long time, but he will come, surely. You know, he never, he has never broken his promise. There was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. He's coming for you. you know, for the wedding, basically. You know, so that we can be together forever and ever in heaven. Don't you think it will be so amazing to see our Lord face to face? And then the, we can talk with Him face to face. Oh Jesus, why you loved me so much? And then... I believe that when we go to heaven, this is what will happen. Even though we do not know right now, God has been taking care of us and He has been helping us. He has been like a send, He is sending angels to help us, to guide us, to, to help us to avoid some dangers. We, we have no idea, but when you go to uh, heaven, we know that what He has done for us and then uh, of course, the most amazing thing is that our body will be transformed into glorious body, spiritual body, so that, uh, you know, I mean, we'll be perfect, basically. And all these angels will serve earth because they are our servant. Just imagine, you know, the angels are singing and then God is right there and then we also sing 
for the glory of God and then the, all the beautiful uh, this uh, river there's a river and the trees and angels it will happen it will be um, the best day for us right let's uh, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 many scriptures talks about um, the Jesus second coming what will happen at that time so from time to time we better read them and remember what will happen right first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 behold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet a cry was heard behold the bridegroom is coming the same right that this trumpet sound will be there for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality verse 54 let's read it together so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory we've been waiting for this moment such a long time by the way um, when I uh, when we when I read this first Corinthians one thing really struck me uh, as a surprise um, do you know this Corinthian church had a lot of problems right they were division and they were like a quarter the lawsuit against each other among the church members and there was uh, abuse of these uh, like a uh, speaking tongue like uh, all this uh, gift and uh, what is oh in met uh, chapter 5 the first Corinthians chapter 5 there was a uh, one brother who was uh, having uh, some relationship with his stepmother which is a terrible sin um, right even among the unbelievers anyway this Corinthian church when you read the first Corinthian and second Corinthian in second Corinthian there were people who denied the apostleship of Paul so they were saying this apostle Paul is preaching the gospel for the money to support himself all kinds of problems were there in Corinthian church but in verse 51 apostle Paul said behold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed all circle the word all what about the brother who was uh, ah, committing sin with his stepmother of course he will be changed too that's the promise you know our salvation is not based on our good work our salvation is based on the precious blood of Jesus Christ you know, the wages of sin is death but Jesus paid everything for our sins so that we don't have to worry about you know the payment of sin and then the God says he has already received double for our sins right that's what happened when Jesus said it is finished all paid on the cross we shall all be changed in verse 51 our corruptible body will put on incorruption so from that time on you don't have to worry about death or sickness or pain or whatever problem you have right now in I'm in my 50s now and I find myself uh, taking many kinds of drugs actually I mean I have a diabetes some you know, chronic disease is there and then the, the 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 older you become you know that you, you take all ki many kinds of drugs for your health because we are perishing but this incorruption will be you know eternal will be like Jesus Christ after resurrection you remember Jesus was going through the world when the, all the doors were shut he just came in I don't know what kind of body we will have uh, in the time of uh, second coming of Jesus Christ but anyway I one thing I know is uh, that will be the amazing body and uh, let's remember the day will come behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him the question is are you ready to see him or not let's go back to Matthew chapter 25 verse 7 
Matthew chapter 25, verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and rimmed, trimmed, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Because of this scripture, some people claim that, look at this, this uh, foolish uh, virgin says their lamps are going out, which means that they are burning actually, right? They are burning, but they are going out. What do you think? We know from verse 3, uh, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. They had no oil. Then how come uh, it's going out? Of course, you know, the Bible has the answer. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. Let's read it together. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory. We are smoking flax. You know what this smoking flax means? Suppose you have a candle, candle. In the center of the candle there's a wick, right? Some something in the center which burns actually, right? It takes the oil or you know, and then it's burning. So this wick is burning. For a short time, of course, right? So what happened to these foolish virgins were that uh, they had a lamp with uh, this flax. The flax was burning without oil, but it doesn't go forever. It doesn't go uh, long, actually. It, it, it'll be uh, going out very soon because there's no oil, okay? I told you, we are the light of the world because uh, we have oil, we are burning, okay? I still remember, I, I think sometimes I told you that uh, in the story, in the book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, the Christian who was taken to uh, some room with uh, uh, this fire burning in the furnace, and then one person was pouring the water to extinguish the fire, but the, the fire never didn't go out. And then when uh, the owner of the house took Christian to the other side of the world, somebody was pouring the oil the back side of the furnace that's why the fire was burning you know without being quenched even though there's someone who was pouring the water that one who was pouring the water to extinguish the fire is satan that's what he's trying to do but it never happens because uh, we have oil oil is burning burning we're burning okay we are the light of this world so those who are not born again, even though they had no oil, they have uh, this uh, smoking flax, which lasts uh, not so long, actually, right? And smoking flax, he will not quench. That's the small chance we are given in this life for salvation, basically. Now, once you are saved, then you will receive oil. You can keep burning. But without getting the oil, the smoking flax will go out very soon, actually. There's a slim chance of being saved because this smoking flax will go out soon. So, um, because of this scripture, let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, verse 8. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. They say that, look at Look at these foolish virgins. They are, the, they are also saved. But for some reason, you know, they didn't prepare the oil and then they, uh, they couldn't join uh, when the bridegroom came. Do you know that in verse uh, 12, verse 12, Matthew chapter 25, verse 12, the bridegroom said, but he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. Do you think... You know, if, if these uh, foolish five virgins were born again Christians, do you think Jesus would say to born again Christians, I do not know you? Well, they are the ones who are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus calls us my brother, brethren. We be have become Jesus' brethren. Do you think uh, Jesus would forget his own brethren? No, I don't think so. By the way, 
this is really important uh, uh, doctrine that the born again Christians will never and ever lose their salvation. Okay, remember, if you do not, uh, if you are confused about this one, um, you might be uh, misled uh, by many false doctrines. Okay, let's turn to John chapter 10, verse 28. John chapter 10, verse 28. Why born again Christians are never and ever lost? You know, John chapter 10, verse 28, 29. Let's read it together. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. By the way, I think you know that, you understand that when you get saved, you have received eternal life. Why is it called eternal life? It's eternally guaranteed to be yours, actually. Eternal life. If that eternal life can be taken from you, it's not eternal, actually. You, know, you have to guard it. You have to keep it. No, you don't have to because... Jesus said here, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. They shall never perish. Don't worry. Okay. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Are you worried about uh, your mistakes after salvation? No. Eternal forgiveness means even that sin has been forgiven by God. He knows what you will do in the future. And the precious blood of Jesus Christ covered all of your sin until you die. And why? Some people teach us that you know, your salvation can be lost. For example, because of Hebrews chapter 6, they say your salvation can be lost. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. Let me just explain briefly. Verse 4, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. Let me read. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Some people understand from this scripture that, you know, those who are enlightened, they are the born again Christians. So once you are enlightened, and once you tasted the heavenly gift, and once you have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and once you uh, have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, so they, they interpret this passage as um, meaning that, you know, these people are born again. But, verse 6, if they fall away, for some reason, if they fall away after salvation, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance. They understand the scripture like that. No, they are wrong, actually. These people are not born again, actually. You know why? Let me explain. Those who one were once enlightened, these refer to the Jewish people in the time of Jesus Christ. You know what happened? When Jesus came, he came as the light, right? Let, let's turn to John chapter 1 verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 9. Let me read. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus came as the light. Right? He's giving light to everyone. So, the Jewish people who saw Jesus, they were given the light. But what happened? John chapter 3, verse 19. John chapter 3, verse 19. Let's read it together. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. 
The light has come, they saw the light, they were enlightened, but they chose darkness over light. No. Those people who saw Jesus, and let's go back to uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4, they were enlightened, they saw Jesus, they have tasted the heavenly gift. Do you remember when Jesus gave the, the fed of 5,000 people? with the five loaves of bread and two fish, they have tasted the heavenly gift, of course. And they have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. They saw the work of the Holy Spirit and they have tasted the good word of God. You know, Jesus preached the word of God and they saw the powers of the age to come. Jesus performed so many miracles and showing the powers. But these people, these Jewish people who saw everything, who tasted, who have become partakers of everything, they fell away. Actually, they rejected Jesus. Then there's no other way. It's impossible to renew them to repentance. So let me tell you, this enlightened and tasted the heavenly gift and became the partaker, partakers of the Holy Spirit, that doesn't mean they are saved. They're not truly born again. And then they rejected Jesus later and killed him. Okay? Salvation can, be, can never be lost. Your salvation is secure. Not because you are good enough, but because that's what God promised. Okay? And let's go back to uh, Matthew chapter 25, uh, verse 9, verse 8. Matthew chapter 25, verse 8. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. For our lambs are going out. But the wise answer saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. Go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Of course, when Jesus comes again, those who have the oil, the Holy Spirit, they are the ready. They are ready to see him. Okay. The oil means Holy Spirit. You will receive the Holy Spirit at the time of salvation. Right? Suppose you want to, uh, you, you are going for a movie. You need a movie ticket. Suppose, suppose you want to take a train. You need a train ticket, right? It's not about how smart you are or how good person you are without ticket you will be denied, actually, right? You say, I'm so smart, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a very good person. Doesn't matter, you need a ticket. It's like that, salvation. You know, you need the blood of Jesus Christ, and you need the Holy Spirit as a guarantee to join second coming Jesus. Then, only then, you are ready. And when you're ready, you'll be joining the wedding of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And the door was shut. Do you remember in the time of Noah? It's God who shut the door. That's why Noah couldn't open the door. When people came, when it started raining, they came to the ark and say, Noah, Noah, help us open the door. The door was, couldn't be opened by Noah because it's God who shut the door. Right? The time is coming, you know, when the door will be shut. Now the door is wide open. You know? Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But this chance will not go forever. Okay? This opening will be gone and the door will be shut. Right? Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Matthew chapter 24, the previous chapter. Verse 42 to 44, let's read it together. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Jesus might come any time. You know, when we see whatever is going on these days, the pandemic and the war and then the 
all this uh, weather change and uh, all kinds of natural disasters, we know that you know, even if Jesus comes today, there will be no surprise because we say that all the signs which will happen before Jesus' second coming are happening right now, right? Verse 44, therefore you also be ready. The wise virgins with oil, they were ready. So they just joined him, right? But the foolish virgins were not ready. That's why the door was shut before them. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He is coming like a thief, right? Matthew chapter 25, verse 11. Afterward, the, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. I have no idea who you are. In Matthew chapter 7, the same thing. People, you know, they call Jesus, Lord, Lord. And they said, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not performed miracles in your name? Have we not done wonders in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Jesus said, I do not know you. Depart from me. And Jesus knows us who are born again because we are the one who accepted his love. We are the one who received the gift from him. Right? Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. We are well known to God. We, who are we? The brethren in Corinthian church, right? Those who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ in Corinth, the Corinthian church. You are, uh, we are well known to God. God knows us very well. You know, when we move to another place, we never forget our children. We might forget some, 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 some stuff, but we never forget our children, right? God knows us so well. He's waiting for us. Just like the, when the prodigal son is coming back home, the father was waiting for him. Just like that, he's waiting for us. Lord, Lord, open to us, the foolish virgin said. But the bridegroom said, I do not know you. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. The conclusion is this, verse 13. Let's read it together. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. He might come any time. Watch, be ready. Make sure about your salvation. Test yourself. Okay? Whether you are in the faith or not. That's how we uh, become ready. Jesus is coming soon. Okay? He said again and again. Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter, verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, the last chapter of the Bible. Verse 12. Let's read it together. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Yes, he's coming quickly. And verse uh, 20, the second last verse. Let's read it together. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Can you say something like this? The same thing? Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Come quickly, Lord. We are waiting for you. Of course, we have work to do before he comes. That's why we are having the summer retreat and we are having the Bible seminar in May in Swan Church because there are so many lost souls. But deep, deep in our heart, we are longing to see our Lord and uh, we want to join Him. Don't become the foolish virgins. Remember, they were also waiting for the second coming of Jesus. They were also waiting for the bridegroom, which means that they are not Muslims, they are not Buddhists, they are Christians. Nominal Christians, maybe church goer. They thought they would see Jesus when He comes. But Jesus said, 
I do not know you. Depart from me. Watch therefore and be ready because after he comes, there will be no chance. So, you know, I talk, we thought about this uh, parable of ten virgins, which is really important, especially you know, we are living in the last days. So we have to make sure that we are this five wise virgins will be with our bridegroom when he comes again and that will be the best moment in your life and that's what God prepared for us let's pray together our Heavenly Father you are teaching us many lessons from the Bible and today we we studied the parable of the ten virgins and those five virgins without oil they had no Holy Spirit they are lost but they were waiting for Jesus' second coming without knowing their true spiritual condition. And Lord, I pray that there will be no, no person, no one, who will be like these five foolish virgins. So please, Lord, uh, help us to uh, have a chance to examine ourselves and test ourselves so that we can make sure we are truly saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we are waiting for Jesus' second coming, we want to glorify you more and more because we want to hear from Jesus our Lord, well done, faithful servant. So Lord, help us to, to preach the gospel and to love each other and to glorify God in our life until Jesus comes again. Thank you so much for this time. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.